Today we're going to talk about what can sometimes be a taboo topic. What exactly is in your food? In order to know what you're eating, you need to know what you're eating ate. When an animal is killed for food, the heads, hooves, the horns, the intestines, and their contents, meaning poop, the bones and blood are deposited into huge grinders at rendering plants. Six or seven million house pets that are euthanized in animal shelters every year and roadkill are also taken to the rendering plants. No animal is too ill, too cancerous, or too decomposed. These horrid ingredients are then ground and steam cooked. The heavier protein stuff is dried and made into a brown powder that includes fecal matter. This brown powder is added to almost all pet foods as well as to livestock feed. In short, the food your food ate consists of dead pets, roadkill, diseased animals, reject parts, and poop. Maybe the poop in your food's food doesn't concern you. What about the poop in your food? In a study conducted by the USDA, they found that 78.6% of ground beef contains microbes that are spread primarily by fecal matter. Once upon a time, USDA inspectors had to condemn any meat with fecal contamination. But about 30 years ago, the industry convinced the USDA to reclassify feces. Feces are now classified as a cosmetic blemish. In the poultry industry, after immersion in a scalding tank, chickens go to a massive refrigerated tank of water. Tom Devine from the Government Accountability Project has said that the water in these tanks has been aptly named fecal soup for all the filth and bacteria floating around. While a significant number of European and Canadian poultry processors employ air chilling systems, 99% of U.S. poultry producers have stayed with water immersion systems. It's not hard to figure out why. Air chilling reduces the weight of a bird's carcass, but water chilling causes a dead bird to soak up water. The very same water known as fecal soup. Jonathan Saffron Ferrar states, U.S. poultry consumers now gift massive poultry producers millions of additional dollars every year as a result of this added liquid. The USDA knows this and defends the practice. After all, the poultry processors are simply doing their best to feed the world, or in this case, ensure its hydration. Of course, you might notice that your chicken doesn't quite taste right. How good could a drug-stuffed, disease-ridden, shit-contaminated animal possibly taste? Independent turkey farmer Frank Reese says, Everyone knows it's our food. We're messing with the genes of these animals and then feeding them growth hormones and all kinds of drugs and antibiotics that we really don't know enough about. Kids today are the first generation to grow up on this stuff, and we're making a science experiment out of them. Isn't it strange how upset people get when a few dozen baseball players take growth hormones, when we're doing what we're doing to our food animals and feeding them to our children? Got pus? Milk does. Due to the infections caused by the unnatural treatment of dairy cows, the dairy industry has actually allowed a certain amount of pus in its milk, 180 million cells per 8 ounces to be exact. This is termed the somatic cell count, and it's an industry standard. Milk also contains the antibiotics given to the cows in order to fend off the very infections that produced the pus, as well as blood, bovine growth hormones, and, you guessed it, feces. And what about our processed food? Any food that's processed is virtually tasteless. So where does the flavor in your food come from? from? New Jersey. The area produces about two-thirds of the flavor additives sold in the United States. In Fast Food Nation, Eric Schlosser writes, calling any of these flavors natural requires a flexible attitude towards the English language and a fair amount of irony. Cochineal extract, known as carmine or carminic acid, is made from the desiccated bodies of female Dactylopius caucus costa. The bug feeds on red cactus berries, and color from the berries accumulates in the females in their unhatched larvae. It takes about 70,000 of them to produce one pound of carmine which is used to make processed foods look pink, red, or purple. Starbucks Strawberry Frappuccino and Dan and Strawberry Yogurt both get their color from Carmine, as do many fruit bars, candies, and fruit fillings. Here are some ingredients listed in Consumer Reports' Shop Smart Guide as weird but edible. Ammoniated beef. Trimmings of meat are gassed with ammonia to kill pathogens. This is the pink slime that went viral on the internet. Bacteriophages. This additive actually contains viruses. It's sprayed on ready-to-eat meat and poultry products to destroy the bacteria Sodium nitrate. High cooking temperatures and stomach acid can cause these chemicals used in processed and cured meats to form compounds associated with cancer. If all of that isn't enough for you, have you ever wondered where artificial raspberry, vanilla, or strawberry flavors come from? Castorium! <laughs> An extract made from dried, ground-up sacs located by the anal glands of beavers. Yes, we're talking about pouches in the ass of a beaver. It can be added to foods such as gums, alcohol, candy, and baked goods. Perhaps tossing a beaver's salad does give you a nice little vanilla flavor. But does that really make it right? So, let's review. Being vegan is extreme, but eating antibiotic pumped meat, shit water inflated birds, nipple pus, ground-up beetle fetuses, shit contaminated meat, and beaver ass pouches is a-okay. Believe it or not, this is just 
the smallest peek into what's in your food. But in keeping with Nugget style, I'll see you guys next time.